Hey you guys, it's time to snuggle up and read. Today I'm going to read my favorite Dr. Seuss story, If I Ran the Zoo. This story is so funny and it makes me wonder if you ran the zoo, what kind of animals would you include in your zoo? It's a pretty good zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, and the fellow who runs it seems proud of it too. But if I ran the zoo, said young Gerald McGrew, I'd make a few changes. That's just what I'd do. The lions and tigers and that kind of stuff they have up there now are not quite good enough. You see things like this in just any old zoo. They're awfully old-fashioned. I want something new. So I'd open up each cage. I'd unlock every pin, let the animals go, and start over again. And somehow or other, I think I could find some beasts of a much more unusual kind. A four-footed lion's not much of a beast. The one in my zoo will have ten feet, at least. Five legs on the left and five more on the right. Then people will stare and they'll say, What a sight! The zookeeper, new keeper, Gerald's quite keen. That's the gold darndest lion I ever have seen. My new zoo, McGrew Zoo, will make people talk. My new zoo, McGruzu, will make people gawk at the strangest odd creatures that ever did walk. I get from my zoo a new sort of a hen who roosts in another hen's top knot and then another one roosts in the top knot of his and another in his and another in his and so forth and onward and upward. Gee whiz! But that's just a start. I'll do better than that. They'll see me next day in my zookeeper's hat, coming into my zoo with an elephant cat. They'll be so surprised they'll all swallow their gum. They'll ask when they see my strange animals come, where do you suppose he gets things like that from? His animals all have such very odd faces. I'll bet he must hunt them in rather odd places. And that's what I'll do, said young Gerald McGrew. If you want to catch beasts you don't see every day, you have to go places quite out of the way. You have to go places no others can get to. You have to get cold and you have to get wet too. Up past the North Pole where the frozen winds squeal, I'll go and I'll hunt in my skiggle mobile and bring back a family of what do you know? And that's how my new zoo, McGrew Zoo, will grow. I'll hunt in the mountains of Zamba Matant. Who helps with helpers who all wear their eyes at a slant and capture a fine fluffy bird called the Bustard who only eats custard with sauce made of mustard and also a very fine beast called the Flustered who only eats mustard with sauce made of custard. I'll catch them in caves and I'll catch them in brooks. I'll catch them in crannies and I'll catch them in nooks that you don't read about in geography books. I'll catch them in countries that no one can spell, like the country of Modifapotifapel. In a country like that, if a hunter is clever, he'll hunt up some beast that you never saw ever. I'll load up a five boats with a family of jotes, whose feet are like cows but wear squirrel skin coats, and sit down like dogs but have voices like goats, excepting they can't sing the very high notes. And then I'll go down to the wilds of Nantucket and capture a family of lunks in a bucket. Then people will say, no, I like that boy heaps. His new zoo, McGrew Zoo, is growing by leaps. He captures them wild and he captures them meek. He captures them slim and he captures them sleek. What do you suppose he will capture next week? I'll capture one tiny. I'll capture one cute. I'll capture a deer that no hunter would shoot. A deer that's so nice he would sleep in your bed if it weren't for those horns that he has on his head. And speaking of horns that are just a bit queer, I'll bring back a very odd family of deer. A mother, a father, two sisters, a brother, whose horns are connected from one to the other. Whose horns are so mixed up they can't tell them apart, can't tell where they end, can't tell where they start. Each deer's mighty puzzled he's never yet found if his horns are hers or the other way round. I'll capture them fat and I'll capture them scrawny. I'll capture a scracklefoot mulligatawny, a high step an animal fast as the wind from the blistering sands of the desert of Zind. This beast is the beast that the brave chieftains ride when they want to go fast to find some place to hide. A mulligatawny is fine for my zoo, 
And so is a chieftain. I'll bring one back too. In the far western part of southeast North Dakota lives a very fine animal called the Iota, but I'll capture one who is even much finer in the northeastern west part of South Carolina. When people see him, they will say, Now by thunder, this new zoo McGruzu is really a wonder. Most beasts are quite friendly, but still in some lands, some beasts are too dangerous to catch with bare hands. For those that are ugly and vicious and mean, I'll build a bad animal catching machine. It's rather expensive to build such a kit, but with it, with it a hunter can never get bit. A zoo should have bugs, so I'll capture a thwirl whose legs are all snarled up in a terrible snarl. Then I'll go out and I'll capture some chugs, some cane shooter, mane shooter, bean shooter bugs. I'll go to the African island of Yurka and bring back a tizzletop tufted mazurka. A kind of canary with quite a tall throat. His neck is so long if he swallows an oat. For breakfast the first day of April, they say, it has to go down such a very long way that it gets to his stomach the 15th of May. It all oh, bag a big bug who is very surprising. A feller who has a propeller for rising and zooming around making cross-country hops from Texas to Boston with only two stops. Now that sort of a thing for a bug is just tops. And when I've caught him, then the next thing you know, I'll go and I'll capture a wild tic-tac-toe with X's that wins and with zero that lose. He'll look mighty good in the zoo of McGrews. I'll bring back a gusset, a gherkin, a gasket, and also a gooch from the wilds of Nantasket. And eight Persian princes will carry the basket, but what their names are I don't know, so don't ask it. In a cave in Khartoum lives a beast called the Thatch that no other hunter's been able to catch. He's hidden for years in his cave with a pout and no one's been able to make him come out. But I'll coax him out with a wonderful meal that's cooked by my cooks in my cooker mobile. They'll fix up a dish that is just to his taste. Three chicken croquettes made of library paste. Then sprinkled with peanut chucks, pickled and spiced. Then baked at 600 degrees and then iced. It's mighty hard cooking to cook up such feasts, but that's how the new zoo, Magruzu, catches beasts. I'll go to the faraway mountains of Topsk, near the mid river of Nopsk, and I'll bring back an Opsk, a sort of a kind of a thingamabobsk, who only eats rhubarb and corn on the Kopsk. Then, people will flock to my zoo in a mopsk. McGrew, they will say, does a wonderful japsk. He hunts with such vim and he hunts with such vigor. His new zoo, McGrew Zoo, gets bigger and bigger. And speaking of birds, there's this Russian Paluski whose head ski is red ski and belly is blue ski. I'll get one of them for my zoo ski, McGrew ski. Then the whole town will gasp, why this boy never sleeps? No keeper before ever kept what he keeps. There's no telling what the young fellow will do. And then just to show them, I'll sell to Katru and bring back an it catch a preep and a prue. A nurkle, a nerd, and a seer seeker too. I'll hunt in the jungles of Hipponohungus and bring back a flock of wild Biponobungus. The Biponobungus from Hipponohungus are better than those down in Diponodungus and smarter than those out in Nipponongus, and that's why I'll catch them in Hipponohungus instead of those others in Nungus and Dungus. And people will say when they see these bips bounding, this zookeeper, new keeper, simply astounding. He travels so far that you'd think he would drop. What do you suppose this young fellow will stop? Stop? Well, I should. But I won't stop until I've captured the Fizzamawizzam a dill, the world's biggest bird from the island of Guark, who only eats pine trees and spits out the bark. And boy, when I get him back to my park, the whole world will say, Young McGrew's made his mark. He's built a zoo better than Noah's whole ark. These wonderful, marvelous beasts that he chooses have made him the greatest of all the McGrew's. Wow, they'll all cheer. What this zoo must be worth, it's the gold darnest zoo on the face of the earth. Yes, that's what I'd do, said young Gerald McGrew. I'd make a few changes if I ran the zoo.